Hello, Michael Main here. Today I'm going to walk you through step by step exactly how I created that personal branding video. Once I posted that, I got quite a few questions and uh, messages asking me how I did it, what I used, and and all that. So I decided to go ahead and make this step by step tutorial to show you exactly what to do. I also wrote a complete blog post to go along with this. So if I move too fast for you, feel free to check it out. I have screenshots and written directions so you can follow it there as well. So with no further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get started. The tools I used were Apple's Keynote for Mac. I could not use PowerPoint because I didn't have the transitions I wanted to use in PowerPoint. Also, I think Keynote produces things for high quality or high definition video a little bit better than PowerPoint does. Uh, so I use Apple's Keynote. You can also use it on the iPad. You can do the same type of transitions, but it would take quite a bit longer to accomplish the same thing on the iPad. I use Final Cut Pro 10 for Mac. Uh, you don't need Final Cut Pro. What I did in that was so simple. You could actually do that in iMovie, Windows Media Player, I'm sorry, Windows Movie Maker, or pretty much any other video editing software. And, uh, and you could do that one on the iPad as well or any other tablet that you, that you may have. Uh, for audio editing, I didn't actually have to do any this time, but when I do, if it's simple stuff like adding fades or cuts or or shortening the duration of the song or something like that then I use Audacity <clears throat> uh, typically I use Audacity sometimes I use GarageBand and very rarely I use Logic but for most cases Audacity is what I use It's free it's lightweight and it does everything much quicker than I've been able to do it in anything else and then I use pen and paper because that's where I tend to jot down my thoughts outline everything and that's where I initially put down all of my sentences so with that I'll go ahead and get started first thing I did was really sit down and think about my audience and my message and myself and really wanted to look at what do I actually want to communicate and to whom or with whom do I really need to communicate and what's the best method in which to communicate so rather than using pictures and things like that I decided to go with this text-based approach <clears throat> and yeah so I kind of mind mapped everything out I outlined everything and then I put down the sentences so after you've done all of that, open up Apple's Keynote, and then you can either hit Command N or File New to create a new presentation. I chose the showroom presentation because I like the background quite a bit. It's, uh, it provides enough simplicity without being too boring, and it also has enough contrast without being too busy. Now I don't use any of the theme elements besides the background. I don't use the text, I don't use the images, the color scheme or anything like that. But you can double click there and then or double click or hit or click it and then click choose. And then you're presented with this canvas here. The first thing I do is delete everything that's on the page or on the slide. And I hit the text button here so I like to start off with a blank canvas and then I hit the text button that puts the text box right in the very center of the text I'm sorry the slide from there I open the inspector window the colors window and the fonts window I double click where it says text and then I click then I choose the font that I like now I prefer to use Gotham for this kind of stuff and I use Gotham light for the regular text and I use Gotham medium italic for the text that I emphasize Gotham is a premium font, and if you don't have it, you can also use Gil Sands. Gil Sands is a pretty good one. I like it quite a bit. It gives a very similar look to Gotham, and it, you do have the light, and you also have you have a bold italic. So it looks fairly similar if you use that one. But for me, I use Gotham Light for most everything. And then, where are you, light? Where are you, light? There you are. Then I changed the size from 42 to 72. Now the reason I did this was because it looks fine on the small screen, but if I blow it up and put it on a projector or something like that, 42 may become hard to read. So I chose that, and now with that said, I can close this box. Now I'll go over to colors, and normally you're going to be presented with this immediately when you open colors, but I like the sliders. And I click down here and I click on RGB slider because it's, this is destined for screen and not for print. If it was for print, you probably use CMYK. So I use RGB and I already have mine saved down here, but for the orange that I use, the red is going to be 
231, the green is 88, and the blue is 2. And that gives you this color right here. So double click, hit the color, and boom, you got the color. Now I can go ahead and close the Windows box. Now that you have your basic format for the text that you'll be using, um, you can simply click over here on the slide and hit Command D or Edit Duplicate. And that duplicates the slide with the color, with the font, and the size that you've already selected so you don't have to do that every time you add text. Now I hit Command D to keep duplicating them until I have the amount of slides that I want. To make things go faster, you can actually select all of them by hitting Command A or just dragging. And then you hit Command D again, and that duplicates them 10 at a time. <clears throat> so I used about 60 slides, so I just keep duplicating until I have right at 60-ish. Then I go back and start editing the text. So I started off with hi, and then slide two was my name is, and then I use an ellipses. Now one little hint about the ellipses is that for the actual way to use an ellipses is three periods, but rather than typing three periods like that, I hit the Alt button on the Mac is Alt and then semicolon, and I can't remember off the top of my head what it is for Windows, but it is Alt and semicolon on Mac, and what this does is it actually selects it as one character instead of three characters see that left and then right now the reason this is important is because a is the correct way to do it B you don't have to add a space after your last letter it does that automatically and C if you're going to lay out your your content in something like Microsoft Word or Adobe InDesign or something like that you don't ever have to worry about two periods or one period being on one line and then the next one or two being on the next line so you don't have to go and fix those um, Plus, it's just, it's just a proper way to do it. So that's a little tipple tabble for you there. And I go through and just finish adding the text that I needed. And just keep going through that. And once you have all the text you need, I'll go ahead and slide. I'm sorry, I'm going to go ahead and go over to the presentation that I've already done so you can see what it looks like there. So this is the one I did. And you can see where I've added the emphasis. And so if you need to, you can reopen the fonts. You double click on the word or what the words or whatever, highlight the words that you want to change, and then just select the font you want to use. And I use medium italic for where I want to emphasis. Once you have done that, you can go ahead and close the font and make sure uh, that you have everything you need. I'll go ahead and actually delete this. If I can, yeah, delete that. So I'll show you how to add that later. And then I just go through and hit play. I just want to make sure that everything is looking the way I want it to look. Now, I already added transition. So to do that, I hit Command A to select everything over here. Hit Command A, or you can just, again, just drag everything. You know, just kind of select like that. So I hit Command A. And then over on the transitions icon, which is the second icon over here, I chose the anagram effect. You can use whichever one you want, but for the effect I used, I used anagram. I selected the duration to be two seconds, so it took two seconds as the effect took place to complete. And then for most of these, I actually used a 0.5 second delay. So that means that once the transition was finished, it took 0.5 seconds to start transitioning again to the next slide. Um, also under direction, you have two options under anagram. You have straight across, which just does this, and then the one I used was the, I guess pronounced arcing, the arcing one, which does like that. It actually arcs. <clears throat> so I selected all of them and did that so I could apply the, the transition to all of them at once. Then I went through and selected the ones that I really needed to change, such as, let's see here, we have one at 20, yeah, like this one, for example. I guess not that one. Da, 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 da. We have a few that are longer than others and need more time to read. Let's see, where did I... Da, 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 da. Actually, I think I might have already changed it. Da, 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 da. Yeah. So everything right now is still 0.5. So what I did was I found the ones like 5 and 13, 
16 and change that delay to one second. And the reason I change that to one second is that it allows you to, or allows the audience rather, to read the entire thing without feeling rushed. And on this one of these last ones down here on 64, I actually turned that one into a four second delay just by doing that. On some of them that were extra short like this, like so and 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 some of those, I changed the duration to 0.5 seconds so it didn't take so, so long for it to actually turn into the into the word. And on everything else I actually used to. So there you go there. Now once that's all done, I go ahead and hit play again and I just watch for flow and make sure that everything is legible. You can read everything. Everything is is in the right order. There are no typos, no spelling mistakes and things like that. I also start asking my question myself questions like does it make sense? If I'm reading this for the first time, do I still have enough time to read it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Once I have the timing down, then I can go ahead and throw in the song. And by doing that, I click on the document icon over here in the inspector window. If you want to do a voiceover, I did not. But if you want to do a voiceover, you can click the record button and and just basically talk through the slide. I'm sorry, talk to your, your presentation as as it's going. And you can see that right here. Actually, you can't see it anymore because my icon's not showing or my cursor's not showing. But you can see the level of the volume being recorded. Once you're finished, hit the escape key. And then you have your recording here saved. So again, I don't use a voiceover in this one. So I'm going to clear that and clear. But I do use a, a soundtrack. So what I do here is you can either drag a, your song from your file browser over to soundtrack or you can open up the iTunes library. The song I used is Shine, so I type Shine in there and test it to make sure that's the actual one I want to use. And it is. So now I can go ahead and drag this into the little box here under soundtrack. I keep the volume all the way up because it's always easier to compress or lower the volume than it is to increase the volume and in post like in iMovie or Final Cut or whatever you end up using. So that's that. And now I play through it one more time from the top by hitting slide one and then play again. I just want to make sure that everything is the way I want it to be. So here we go. Inexcusable. <laughs> So when you're finished with that, go ahead and just escape out of it. I'm pretty satisfied with the final with the final presentation. Then notice that in the anagram, everything kind of breaks apart and does the arcing thing. I don't want it to do that on the very last slide. The very last slide, I want it to kind of fade to black. And so I go back to the transitions tab or icon. And instead of anagram, I'm actually going to change that to dissolve. And then it fades to black there. So now... If I play it from this point, then excusable. It fades to black. So that's it with the presentation. Now that you're done there, just make sure everything is as exactly as you want it. Then go to File and then Export. And then Export as a QuickTime video. Click Manual Advance. The reason you want Manual Advance is because that will take into account the transitions and the timing you've already set. Uh, I always go into enter full screen mode when open because I want to take up the entire screen. Under format you have several options here and you can also customize it. I go ahead and go with full quality and again because I can always bring things down but it's harder to make things bigger or better or whatever the case may be higher quality. So I always start off with a high quality product and then compress to where I need it. I include audio and I include the soundtrack. I don't include transparency here because I'm not dealing with any transparent images, but if you are, make sure that's checked. And then click Next. Then select where you want to save it. I'm going to save mine under Movies and then Social Web. And then title it what you want to title it. So this is just going to be Personal Branding Presentation. And then click Export. Once you have it exported, what you'll have then is who is actual two different files. You have the presentation file, which is a QuickTime video. And you'll also have the soundtrack, which is also a QuickTime, technically QuickTime video. 
So I'm going to go ahead and cancel out, but you would click the export button because I already have those. Once It's going to take a while to render depending on how many slides you have. And then I'm going to go ahead and go over to Final Cut. Now again, you can use anything you want to use, but I'm familiar with Final Cut, so that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to first create a new event by right-clicking here and then write New Event. This is going to be Personal Branding Video. And then I am going to create a new project. And this is going to be the default event will be personal branding video. And I'm going to also title the project personal branding video. You don't have to title them the same, but in this case, I don't plan on adding several things to this project. So I'll only have one event. And then click OK. And there you are. You're presented with now a blank event and a blank project. So now I click on X, I'm sorry, import files. I'm going to go back to social web and these are the two tracks I want to bring in. I'm going to import those into the personal branding video. If you didn't create it before, you can just create a new one there. And again, that's your event. And then under organizing, I always copy the files so I don't accidentally uh, destroy or alter the original files. Under transcoding, I go ahead and keep create optimized media checked. Uh, and then under video, normally if I'm if I'm importing from like a camera, camcorder, something like that, I do analyze for balance and color, and I do the same thing with audio. But in this case, since I am since it came from Keynote or presentation, there's nothing to to fix there, or it shouldn't be anything to fix there. So I uncheck those, and then click import. So now I have both the video here and the audio here. So now I just simply drag the video to the timeline. And again, this works pretty much exactly the same way in iMovie. Yep, this is going to be 1080p. It's going to be, again, 1080p resolution. And then the frame rate is 23.98, which is what YouTube, Vimeo, and Blip TV use. So I click OK there. Then I am going to drag down the audio track and add that right underneath the video. So from here, I like to go ahead and make sure that everything ends where it's supposed to end, starts where it's supposed to start, and it doesn't. <laughs> so I'm going to actually drag this to the ending. And I actually did that on purpose because I want this the audio to actually kind of drop in when I say my when Michael B. Main is introduced. Um, I then I hit the space bar just to preview everything to make sure that the video is working and the audio is working. And I see the video is moving. It's been excusable. And the audio is working, so that's good. Now, if you notice over here, when I press the space bar and I had the audio playing, it actually it kind of jumped pretty high. When it starts hitting red, that's, that's too high, so it's clipping a little bit. So I click on the audio here, and then I click on the volume, or if it's not already showing, just hit the I for inspector. Open that back up, and then under volume, click that little, a little number, and I'm just going to hit a minus four to bring it down a little bit. And now you don't see all that red down there. Now that I'm finished with editing everything, I am going to share, click out something, and then share, and then export media. Now you can export directly to YouTube, Facebook, Vimeo, uh, Vimeo or Vimeo, however you want to pronounce it, and CNN iReport, but I find that <clears throat> I always run into problems when I do that, so I just export the media itself as one movie, and then I upload them individually. So here I'm presented with another dialog window for options and everything here is set pretty well so I'm going to export both the video and the audio into one file. I'm going to use H.64 codec. The reason I'm using that is because that's what that's pretty much a web standard now. And then for open with you can select none but I typically open it with QuickTime just so I can get a quick reference on, on how everything turned out when I finish. Then click next and select where you want to save it and here you are so I'm going to put this back in social web and I'm going to title this uh, final movie or whatever you want to call it and then I just hit save 
Once you've hit save, it's going to take a little while to render and save the file. It's going to open up QuickTime, so then I'll be able to know that it worked. And then I can upload them to any kind of site, whatever, any kind of video hosting site that I want to at that point, And I am done. So there you have it. I hope this was helpful for you. If it was good, let me know. If it was not, let me know as well, because I'd like to make these better and easier and more accessible in the future. Uh, if you need to reach me, you can do so at, my, at mail at michaelbmain.com. That's M-A-I-L at M-I-C-H-A-E-L-B-M-A-I-N-E.com. You can also find me on Twitter at michaelbmain. And you can leave your comments below in the blog post or in the YouTube video. Again, I uh, created a full-blown blog post for this with step-by-step -step instructions written out. So if this was too fast for you or it's too hard to follow, feel free to check it out there. I have the full text and screenshots. All right, hope you guys have a good one. Take it easy and be safe out there.